Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my playlist which uh, talks about all about microservices and this is my first video and uh, as I promised that we are going to start from very basic and this playlist is for everyone. So what we are going to do in the first video is how to baseline a JavaScript TypeScript repository. So either you work on a microservice either on Express TypeScript or the Nest CLI or Koa, Happy Joshua happy JS or any other javascript framework to build the apis you always need a baseline repository so that you can extend it and you can reuse the configurations from the baseline like okay these are like common configurations which you always need to have typescript related configurations prettier eslint husky commit lint a docker related test or just library related configurations deploy script and ci cd and these are some javascript toolings which you always need so what we are going to do is first we are going to work on creating the baseline template that baseline template i can use my any of my project if you are in building an independent um, repository most of the cases i always use a monorepo and in the monorepo you just put a global configurations on the top and then inside a packages or applications you start adding your microservices right so you can have a baseline template on your github gitlab and you can just always fork that template to create any new microservice so you always have those global standards configurations lint configurations or prettier configuration or uh, husky git commit hooks all those things are always there you don't need to write it and nobody wants to write things uh, again and again so that is what we are going to talk about in this particular video like creating a minimal a microservice baseline and then you can extend that okay i wanted to use express or nest js or nest cli or koa happy or maybe something else okay so let's get started if i talk about there are different cli tools we have right uh, we create a nest cli nest.js project express app generator express typescript app generator next.js app cli right or i mean right now i think there is every project contains a cli which helps you to bootstrap the projects from the basics you don't need to do anything it will just initialize the repository create a skeleton of folders Either you are using TypeScript or without uh, TypeScript, just a simple JavaScript, Next.js, Nest.js, all those things it is giving you. So the, 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 the video which I'm talking about can be used once you have a uh, project created through CLI and then start adding the global configurations about all these things. So we will be adding Git related configurations, Git hooks and all CI CD related TypeScript, JavaScript compiler related configurations, prettier ESLint. Husky, commit lint, and commit conventions configurations, docker related, docker compose, docker file, test related, how you can configure a test in your project, either JavaScript, TypeScript, React, Next.js, or any kind of project, and how you can add a deploy script, test related configurations like just, just config, or uh, if you are using some other runner like Karma and Jasmine, and script for automations, like if you are doing end to end automations and all those things. So this is what I'm going to talk about this as the title says we are going to talk about some global things which you need in each and every JavaScript TypeScript projects and that you can keep as a template either you can start uh, your project from ground zero build this template first and then start adding your uh, stuff like okay react I need a react dependency next JS and all or create others uh, the project with the CLI and then add all these configurations on top of that. So let's get started. Uh, it's uh, just an independent video that uh, I will share on the GitHub link and you can just take a look. So let's take a look uh, like what all configurations and all we need. So let's talk about code baseline and repository tools, right? Whenever you are baselining the code, you need a VS code. So that's the first you need to have a VS code installed. Then you need all the required plugins and extensions. I mean the most common popular plugins, prettier, ESLint, uh, Node.js extension pack, uh, import coast or some theme which you really like, prettier, ESLint, uh, I mean all the, the global, 
all the most popular uh, extensions which helps you to write code some uh, some linters some autocomplete tools and all i mean those are like popular uh, plugins and extensions available on vs code then we have prettier like we have prettier es lint husky commit lint and you can also install the plugins and extension for github so you can actually uh, do a git push git commits and all those things you can do git uh, git glance is there which is a vs code plugin similarly for ci cd for docker all these things there is an extension and plugin available install that then we will talk about how to set up prettier es lint and husky these are like uh, three independent tools husky to create a git hooks commit lint to enforce the commit conventions obviously you need to have a readme file if you are using docker compose or dockerization containerization then you will use a docker so all those things we need for our project right so these are like uh, additionally you need uh, code configurations like code modules whatever the code you are going to write that should be modular enough right so these are uh, if you talk about all the required plugins right for javascript typescript there are enough amount of plugins are available which can like auto complete uh, formatters for the typescript code for javascript code or for prettier to make your code look pretty husky is actually provides a git hooks so you can uh, add a hook with the git commit so whenever you are doing commit the hooks will run and that will check the prettier format eslint stuff and all before you raise a commit it will check the code conventions code styling formatting and prettier rules the ci configurations you can have a gitlab ci and all readme obviously all the projects must have a readme file to just showcase the documentation about what the project is how to set up the project how to run the project how to test the project and there is any troubleshooting if you need so this is where we are starting what we need to do we create a simple readme file and this is how you can just create a simple uh, readme file because here we are creating a baseline template for our projects so here what the basic uh, readme file contains okay the installation instructions setup uh, test build how to deploy it any important notes or troubleshooting guide all those things right so what are the the requirement like prerequisites what is the node.js version what is the npm version right what is the package manager npm yarn or pnpm i mean i mean and which particular version you are using it should be greater than 16.18.x or uh, you are you should have a vs code or some nice editor where you can do you need to have a github obviously you will be cloning so you already have a github and then all the required plugins and extensions to just work and make your task easy right now for the installation what anybody will do they will just clone the repository they will go inside the folder they will run the npm install command to install all the dependencies which are there in the package json and then npm run start if you wanted to start the project or just npm run build to build the project so now for the setup setup is means like okay copy the environment configurations into dot env then npm run build npm run test npm run clean all those package json scripts you will be running to get things done right so here we need to create an environment first for that and put the environment variables into dot env using maybe some module like dot env we might be using then uh, npm run this is how you will set up npm run dev that's to start npm run deploy there may be some command but before that we will do npm run test npm run build everything is good npm run start dev maybe to test if the application runs fine i mean these scripts you already know what the, the meaning test is test npm run test npm run deploy is deploy npm run uh, dev to check the setup is done properly or not right and then you can do the end to end testing using cypress end to end testing or npm just npm run test unit whatever the the test command you have right now you can start uh, creating a basic package json like you can initialize the repository using git init command and then npm init command git init to initialize the repository npm init to just create a package json and create a javascript initialize a javascript project which can be javascript typescript or can be a front and back end or maybe a mono repo using pnpm or integrated or package based mono repo using nx right now we will create all the required files like dot env so now what we are talking about we are talking about what all the basic things you need to have in your setup it's not 
a constraint that you need to have it like this only but it's good to have like okay if you want to build a project from the start and you want to have some boilerplate which you can use anywhere like a commit configuration spirit here eslint those are common for every project uh, ts config ts build config or some docker configurations a deploy a script a test related setup using jest all these are common which you can use anywhere right so all those things you can just create here we are creating npmrc and vmrc just to uh, npmrc if you wanted to if you are accessing some private repository from your organizational github account or nvmrc to fix the node account when you are deploying it to netlify or in any external environment which is doing npm install so what is the base version they should bootstrap first right so and then we have a git prettier rc to enforce the prettier uh, standards like currently i have only two rules and then prettier ignore there are set of files which i wanted to ignore like coverage test build node modules artifacts assets those we don't need to look into for running the prettier so just do a prettier ignore file and put all the path there and then here we can just start installing all the required dependencies which we need so here i'm going to talk about those specific dependencies one by one it's not that okay you just install all these dependency also understand the meaning prettier npm module husky to create a git hooks a register git hooks prettier husky and then dot env to populate the environment variables from dot env to process dot env which is a node.js javascript environment then eslint obviously eslint is the latest we are using and there may be some compatibility in the versions because some package i'm going to copy paste and uh, some packages I'm installing directly, like ESLint is already there as a 9.0, 8.52.0. We can stick to only 7.x or something uh, lesser. Prettier is 3.0.3. You will do npm install, and you can see there is a compatibility issues that uh, ESLint 8.52 is not compatible with all the other peer dependency issue, right? So we will just stick to 7.32. If you want to upgrade the ESLint to 8.x, then obviously you need to upgrade the ESLint config, ESLint plugin, ESLint plugin and new unused import because these are like peer dependencies and if you break them then you need to correct the, the package version. Here we need a TS chest, TS node, TypeScript. These are like a common dev dependencies you need to have when you are using chest and a TSC TypeScript configuration to run the build. So here we will create tsconfig.json, tsconfig.build.json so if you want to have a separate uh, configurations for test also you can have it tsconfig.test.json while doing tsc command typescript uh, compiler tsc command you can specify the path of the file which you want to use during build so this is the base tsconfig and in the tsconfig build you can import the, the base configurations and overwrite some rules if you want so here compiler options uh, i'm doing some false so we are we are going to generate a build as output directory source is the default input directory okay now we can create a eslint rc or eslint ignore all the eslint rc.js the, the obviously the required file is uh, it contains the configurations okay what is the parser you are using what are the plugins you are using so here you can see it is extending the recommend and eslint recommend parser is TypeScript ESLint parser and the parser options and then plugin is TypeScript plugin. This is the plugin you are using. So always be careful with the ESLint version. Either you are using 7.x or 8.x. You need to check the compatibility. We can use a git ignore. Git ignore to ignore the files so that we don't commit the files which we don't need to push to GitHub. And here we are just creating the other required configurations. Let's say CI configuration, CI CD. So you can create a github actions just a simple dot github inside that you can create a, these uh, actions or you can just create a gitlab ci.yml here you will define the steps if you want to deploy this project to gitlab otherwise all the other required configurations are just config for the testing and you don't need to worry about how the configuration looks like you can copy these from the jest website i have already a configured project that I'm using so I can just copy paste the just configurations which I wanted to use for this demo. So we will have a just config that is going to look into the test folder having uh, files with the spec.ts 
and it is going to run the so it's like npm run test that is going to pick all the spec.ts file from the input we can create other folder like test source inside source you can use you will start creating the modules modular folder structure inside test we have a uh, test cases already added prettier ignore git ignore ESLint ignore all these are actually required files and they know what to ignore and then here you can see ESLint this is how you can get started with the ESLint it gives you some basic instructions what you need to do and then we have prettier prettier configurations we can just write a simple prettier and then how to set up it uh, you just start uh, executing the prettier command using uh, npm run prettier write or npm run prettier okay and the next thing we are installing is this commit lint to enforce the constraint our commit like what should be the commit passes how it should look like so we are using commit lint cli okay and here you need to extend it inside you need to create a simple file commit lint config so once the installation is done for the commit lint cli uh, some some dependency i still need to install that's not done before I will just populate this in the package in the commit lint config.js. This is a commit lint config. And then I can start executing my tests. So this is now the next thing is we are going to install Husky. Husky is actually a hook. Okay. To enforce some rule on the how we do the commit. It's like you it used to create a git uh, commit hooks. So whenever you are doing git commit, git push, you wanted to execute some script before so you can check uh, all the content in it right so here we are just heading up so this is a simple example what this example is doing is in this example we are actually adding a pre-commit hook if you see the add a hook first of all we install we added this script inside a package json npm package set script dot prepare so there is a prepare script we have added as a husky install so when you do npm run prepare husky will get configured on your repository then here what you are doing inside a husky in the pre-commit hook we are adding npm test and then we are adding a pre-commit and then when you do commit it will execute npm test command for your local setup so why it is executing i am doing commit i have nothing to do with the tests i am just doing commit but the npm test is being executed why because i have registered a pre-commit hook so even before the commit is added this will get triggered so that we can also test how that is happening I did a commit and it is executing npm run test that is correct and it is execute, exiting with the status code 1 and this is the pre-commit hook which we just have added right so similarly we will create these uh, all the required hooks from my base projects so you can just paste all those things inside a husky folder all the commit all the hooks you wanted to register so here we have all the the commit hooks ready and if you see what this commit hooks contain pre-commit it will run npm run lint npm run prettier pretty much straightforward whenever you are doing pre-commit it is going to execute these two commands and then prepare commit message that is if you can see i hit np i hit git commit so obviously it is hitting it is running the lint command lint script but i don't have it so maybe i will also populate some scripts inside package json which is doing a lint lint is eslint now I execute it, lint is now running, but I need to install this plugin so that ESLint can run successfully. So I think I need to just play with some versions because, and also I need to check if I already have all the required dependencies. I think ESLint plugin I don't have. So I need to install the, the required dependencies which are not there. And also we can configure the npm run prettier and prettier write. So this is how I'm doing commit and then okay, obviously there is a plugin missing eslint is 7.0.32 that is fine. I need to add some add this dependency as a dev dependency and it is breaking. So maybe something we have not done correctly. PA dependencies of 101. I think these are some of the dependencies which were missing. The eslint plugin, the core dependency, the main dependency was not there. Now you can see the eslint is running and then it is uh, trying to hit the, execute the pre-commit. 
So first of all, I will just install create index.ts file so that ESLint will run. And I can see that now, I, now it's complaining for the file. So that means it is running properly. I can do npm run prettier write to format the files based on the prettier rule. And then I can just do git commit. So, and uh, you can see this is broken. That means some dependency is not installed or not configured properly. Uh, node module will be in CZ. Okay, yeah, we haven't added the commit gen and commit gen change log. So I will just do npm install again. And it will install all the dependencies which we need. So this is like a standard baseline, all the dependencies, node mon, ESLint, ESLint plugins, ESLint uh, config and commit lint, commit lint CLI. And I did npm run pretty right. And I am just doing commit, but something again, I got struck. So this is the issue which I was facing. And I think this is the prob probable fix. I can just execute this command to initialize the change log commit constraint. So I will just copy this and I will paste it here. I need to enforce it. And then I can enforce it and then I can just execute the prettier command, prettier write. It should be able to write the, it should be able to execute the prettier write in this case. So here it's a git commit look, right? Prettier run. Okay, now it's successful. That's what we want. I can just do a like and the heart icon so that other can also fix this problem using this command. So now our prettier works fine. And our ESLint also works fine and these hooks are executing properly. And here you can see, this is the prepare, prepare commit message. Right, and I can just do git add, git commit. This is the configuration which you need to add in the package JSON to enable this uh, commit. And now I can add the additional script like build, build tsc minus p and you can just specify the config which you config like tsconfig.build.json. This is the file I wanted to use to run the build command, npm run build. And I can also execute uh, the pre-build task, which will check the node.js version, which will clean the, 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 the build folder or the dist folder. All those things we can execute, we can hit all the scripts. This is to enforce the package uh, engine because what happens is when we create a project, somebody uses a node.js uh, 14, some 16, some 18 or somebody is still using legacy which is not even supported now 12 or 10 so we are enforcing that your node version should be 14.x i mean you start you should start using node 18 as the latest lts support because 16 is also going away for the support uh, now because now the libraries needs to be upgraded and your project should migrate uh, with the node.js version so these dev engines are will enforce uh, you to use we can add a script to check versions so whenever you are to doing check engine or check version, so whenever you are running any script like commit or uh, build or test, you will always check, okay, what is your version? And here we are doing check engines. A clean script is still missing. So what we can do is we can add this clean script manually, which will just uh, rim wrap. I mean, remove the, the folder like build, coverage, dist, all these folders it will do. Now I can do npm run build which will do npm run pre-build, which will do clean and check the, the node.js engine, right? If you look into this package JSON, here build, clean, pre-build. So when I'm doing build, pre-build will get executed because this is how the package scripts are work. It will always check for the pre-hook, pre-build. Let's say you are executing npm run task. So it will always check pre-task or post-task is there in the package JSON script or not. And now, these are my configurations. I have almost everything. We can also set up the tests. So here, these are the standard uh, versions you need to use. Don't forget them. I'm using yeslint 7.32 uh, configured with the prettier, the same fixed set of versions. Okay, if you if you are moving to yeslint 8.x, then obviously you need to check for the updated versions and compatible versions for the config prettier or first install the eslint and then install all these packages so appropriate version automatically will be taken care by npm while installing the package because we we don't specify the version and it will check okay eslint is there and then it, it this is how it will become compatible install that so here we are going to execute npm run test and inside test you can just use jest
so we also need to check okay what all just configurations we need just config dot js uh, so here we are doing npm run test that will fail because we don't have any test file so i can create inside source folder index dot spec dot ts okay so this is the last thing we are setting up additionally you can set up a docker docker compose gitlab configurations or github actions all sort of things here you can just set up all the test related configurations test related test related package scripts which is npm run test npm run ci npm run test end to end npm run test unit npm run coverage to create a coverage npm run watch that will execute the uh, keep executing the test when you are changing the files on the fly okay so here we can you can also have a separate env.test file to have a separate environment rather than just using env file which we are using for local development and here inside test config you can specify okay initialize the environment with some .js file and here i found this issue which is a github xm reporter so for that i need to downgrade my jest version from the stack overflow and all i found that out so i need to just downgrade that version and then it starts working at least you won't be facing this github action report issue so i just moved uh, github to 20.20.x but uh, it will it has created a small issue with the un uncompatibility between ts jest and jest so that we can figure out easily install jest 28.0.0 and then install ts jest so it will also install a ts jest of version 28.x okay so this is the master of all the boilerplate which is required for your project now the configurations can be different you might be using github gitlab bitbucket you might be using jenkins gitlab ci circle ci and uh, you might be using some uh, custom configurations for the deployment you might be using azure or google C google cloud platform or aws right so those configuration depends on your runtime platform but other than that prettier uh, eslint commit conventions test configurations uh, your docker configurations for local development and test setup all look similar so you can consider this as a master boilerplate for your projects okay so that's all i wanted to cover in this video thanks everyone thanks for watching we also did some kind of a troubleshooting like uh, we were not able to set up this commit lint and then uh, i fixed that using that command to re by initializing the commit lint commit gen locally and it worked so those things you might face so always uh, look into the video for troubleshooting uh, that's all thanks everyone this video is independent of any playlist you can use this for creating your baseline monorepo uh, any kind of a repository for javascript type projects for front end back end and full stack okay thanks everyone thanks for watching if you like